And now we're going to extend our discussion with Dr. Hayat Sindhi, and she's going to tackle a quite very interesting topic about what science knows and what business does. Put your hands together for Dr. Hayat Sindhi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. It's my great honor to be with you today and uh, thank you for your invitation and I'm really thrilled to be among you today. Waiting for my presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Since leaving Saudi Arabia as a student, I have been on a journey to become a scientist based on the great scholars I was inspired by as a child. This inspiration is what pushed me so strongly against many odds to work as hard as I needed to be accepted and to study at the world's best universities, including King's College London, Cambridge, MIT, and Harvard. And even since those early years of inspiration, my passion and my story has been about connecting science to social needs and to engaging the hearts and minds of young people. Strong societies depend on them, the future depends on them. So it's my priority to use my passion to connect young people to greater possibilities through innovation. Of course, as a scientist, I know that great discoveries and true innovation cannot occur in a vacuum. Innovation requires a network of minds and a network of resources working together to create long-term value for investors and for societies. To this end, I have established the I2 Institute for Imagination and Ingenuity in order to create an ecosystem of entrepreneurship and social innovation for scientists, engineers, and technologists in the Middle East and beyond. I2 ecosystem works at several levels to create hope and positive change. It feeds innovation by aligning science and social values. It offers an inspiration by encouraging imagination and providing the resources to make it real. And it creates impact by building a model for sustainable results. First, I2 begins by approaching innovation through a holistic lens of science, social values. That is, science should always ask how it can solve problems and improve people's lives. This social element has a, a long history in science for example, in the 8th century, the science of the Islamic scholar led to time measurement of the, for the prayer and navigation. Francis Bacon believed science should aim at practical invention for improvement of all human life. Later, the desire to solve human problems led to innovations like electrification, the automobile, and airplane and a greater understanding of man himself. Science-like innovation cannot be born in a vacuum. 
nor should it exist without a focus on solving problems to improve the lives of people and societies. Publications, patents, and tenure are part of the process, but the power of these achievements should be used to advance humanity. This balance doesn't come at the expense of our economies, but instead can actually fuel our economy. Take, for example, the North Carolina Center, which started in 1984. The tobacco it started with the human problems. The tobacco, a textile and furniture markets were being eroded and people were losing their jobs. The governor of North Carolina saw the bioscience was starting to grow and believed the industry could create jobs in this state. He was right. Now there are more than 500 companies thriving there, which shows that science and social need can go hand in hand to solve economic and social problems in a sustainable way. Simply put, innovation needs free market and social values I2C is beyond profit alone. We want to engage businesses and investors, but we also want to prioritize other values such as duty, well-being, health, peace, and harmony. We need to engage enterprise and society as partners in innovation and in common good. It is not only our responsibility, but also our opportunity and it is the fundamental principle on which I2 ecosystem is built. <clears throat> the second component of I2's ecosystem is inspiration. By which I mean not just the freedom to imagine, but also the resources to translate imagination into reality. Right now, many of our young people have access to education but not to opportunities, which is to say a lack of access to hope. They may have brilliant ideas, but they don't have anyone telling them their ideas are possible or giving them the skills and resources to bring those ideas to life. Let me share some statistics with you. About 47% of the Arab population is 18 years old or younger. Arabs are young on average. We must recognize the part our youth can and the, um, the part our youth can and will play in shaping our region's future and its economy. We have culturally instinct fear of failure a high sort of 51% on the risk aversion index. Additionally, the Middle East has a nascent domestic investor community, and our investor interest is much lower for science-based ventures. To stop this, I too wants to create more opportunities at home and more hope here at home. We will provide inspiration through direct mentorship and networking, but we will also provide concrete resources like training in business and communication skills to give young people the means to make their ideas happen. And confidence to believe that they could. Let me share with you this story. This is a picture of Ahmed, who lives in the Mam in Saudi Arabia. Ahmed's mother was giving him a, a bath before bed, and she was telling him about my inventions. He never met me, and he never saw me. But when was ready, ready to go to bed, he sent me this message. He was asking me help. Could I give him my sensor 
for use in his spaceship, which he will invent one day to go to the moon. He said, please help me. Here's a bright young mind representing an example of a whole new generation of potential. I also get emails from older youth, from college and post-college, students who reach out to me with more fully formed, educated ideas. They are examples of the opportunities that we could capture with sufficient resources. So with mentors and with science itself, small things can create big change. Mentorship changes everything. Imagine how different your own life is because of a mentor, teacher, or a leader who believed in you and showed you that your ideas and dreams not only mattered, but could be realized. Now, imagine an institution that does that. I too will help young people see the big picture. After all, we one person, after all one, where one person saw a mold on a crusty pretty dish, another person saw that as a mold pattern could be something else. Indeed, the mold pattern was from penicillin. Innovation needs dreamers, but innovation and imagination are in service of I2 ultimate goal, deep and last impact. One unique ecosystem creates a sustainable model by giving the youth a strong platform to expand their skills and believe in their ideas. And by giving business the opportunity to help realize them. Existing enterprise and new enterprise will both benefit as will society at large given our emphasis on social science. I'm not here today to define the exact plan of I2, but rather to, ex to explain that in building our ecosystem, we are committed to testing, refining, and retesting until the ecosystem performs consistently and successfully for our students and for our opportunities. We'll perfect our model first in Saudi Arabia in the hope that it will eventually be scalable in other regions. There is so much at stake and we want to make as much of a difference as possible. That's why we are not interested in creating an instance of innovation, but environments of innovation. I2 ecosystem is both necessary and unique it allies science and social innovation. It provides an inspiration and concrete resources, and it creates sustainable, scalable change. I2 elevates and unites innovation, inspiration, and impact. I2 will give our youth the freedom to imagine and the freedom to move the target. I too will give our youth the courage to not fear failure, but instead to do, to learn, and to keep doing, for having the confidence to try is the root of all innovation. I too will give our youth the power not just to paint the future, but to be the future. This is imagination, Institute for Imagination and Ingenuity. Please visit our innovation page at institute.org to read about the structure and approach of our fellowship program. And if we have done our job in inspiring you, we hope that you will visit our website. We need your ideas, your rigor, your imagination, and your ingenuity, and together we need to ensure your personal success to, to prove the way forward that for greater opportunities, health, healthier communities, stronger economies, and a more successful future for our region 
and the role we here can all have in each other's lives and the goal for the community. Thank you very much. I will stop here and I would like to take some questions to emphasize more the role of I2 in details. Any questions? Yes. My name is Boon Pin. Can you please share on mentoring? Thank you. Yes, mentorship is, is a high priority. I think it's everything for our lives. As I mentioned, how many of us, our life changed because of a mentor, of a teacher, uh, of an inspired leader you read about in the book. So when somebody joined the program of Fellowship of IT Institute, they will have an instant two mentors, one international and one local, to be able to guide them, to help them, uh, to have a conversation, to guide them through the way. Uh, entrepreneurship uh, journey is a, um, is a unique journey, is a lonely journey. And also you need somebody who already been there on the field to give you the knowledge, to give you the expertise. So, um, so we have uh, mentors are dedicated, of course, to the field of, of the entrepreneurs. If somebody who has um, uh, have an invention in IT, for example, in computer or, or on health, so we dedicate to them uh, mentors who are um, with the inter inter international um, scope and also with local because at the end of the day you want to see the ideas uh, become uh, to uh, companies uh, based in the local community. So without the knowledge of know-how in, in the local community um, it won't be um, difficult for the entrepreneur to imagine how he can execute. So um, and that's the whole idea. Uh, we expose them to the um, to the best um, model around the world. But at the end of the day, I don't want them to create another Harvard or MIT in my country or in the Arab world because you cannot create another uh, model. What you can do is we come and, and see what opportunities do you have and you push the boundaries with the way you learn to create the model perfect for, for the local community. Thank you very much.